Okay, so here's the hold the manager replayer, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we'll look at quite a few NL50 hands, uh, which is where I want most of you guys to begin your play, if not even um, lower than that, uh, NL, so NL20 even, uh, NL10, just to get your feet wet and get all the errors out of your system um, that do happen on online poker and really get a feel for the game. Uh, it is quite different than live play. Uh, also get to know the, you know the statistics programs um, yeah and everything else so uh, we'll look at some NL50 and NL100 hands and take it from there uh, in these few hands to wrap up this video I'm gonna very much uh, draw your attention here to this top left corner uh, again for all you who have seen the um, poker math videos um, essentials made easy this will be very clear to you, of course, I've explained all the different statistics that you see here in great detail. Uh, but as we go, as this is the um, bet sizing, bet types, and kind of lines of play and uh, moves sub-series, I want you guys to really focus on this here. Um, the game we have at hand is a 25 50 cent blind scenario, so NL50 um, in popular terms. Total pot at this point is 75 cents, Okay, so 1.5 big blinds. You're going to see everybody's cards were Delta C down here. Um, and, of course, when you're in a live game, you're not going to see everybody's cards. So just know that uh, if you do see somebody's hand, it's, <laughs> it's because of the replay and it's because the hand's over with. Uh, not because there's anything shady. Um, I've, you can also set it such that you, you don't see the cards that are known. But uh, in this scenario, then, yeah, we're going to go and play it like that. So just to give you guys an idea of how how some people play, especially at the low and the mid limit. So the first guy folds, and our guy with a pair of sixes raises five big blinds. All right, so it's quite high. Given this kind of player is indicative very often of strength. So this guy, this is uh, okay. Quick recap: fold to the big blind and uh, fold to a steal in the big blind. That's that stat. Fold to a steal in the small blind. That's this stat. Uh, this is his total V pip. Voluntary put in pot. How many hands he plays preflop? That means one in three. That's 32 percent. How many times he's raising, which is 10 percent here. Um, so of the one in three, he's going to raise yeah one in nine, say um, total. Uh, and he's only stealing 14 percent. Okay, so this guy is a loose passive player preflop. What does he look like post flop? Well, we've got 85 hands on him, as you see here. Uh, this here is his 3.4. Is uh, that's his aggression factor. Um, which is quite high. So this guy's a loose passive player preflop, um, often. <laughs> uh, not necessarily in this end. And he is quite aggressive postflop at a 3.4 aggression factor. This 75% is the total amount that he himself will make a continuation bet. This is the fold to continuation bet stat in a two bet or normal pot. And this here is 35% is how often he gets to a showdown whenever he's playing. You know, one time in three when he's playing a hand, he's going all the way downtown. When he gets to the showdown, he's only winning also one time in three, as you see down here. Uh, this bottom line here is basically the attempt to steal of a limp pot. That means everybody limps in, it's checked to him, he's late, and he makes a bet. That's the attempt to steal a limp pot on the flop. This is the total uh, percentage that he'll fold to any bet on the flop, fold to any bet on the turn, fold to any bet on the river and again we already had yeah how often he's winning when he gets to the showdown so quick overview uh, quick review of what the stats are and we'll take it from there so back to the action uh, let's just refresh the stats here okay and drop that down to speed and here we go so he decides to go ahead and make it five big blinds and we've got kings he's given us pot odds of 1.3 to 1, so that means if we're to push all in right here, we only need 43% equity to break even in the long run. Of course, we're playing here with uh, 104, 5 uh, big blinds, so we're big stacked, and he's playing, you know, more or less with, uh, yeah, 60, whatever. Um, good, so what we're going to do here is he's made a an open raise, i.e. 2 bet, and we're going to make a 3 bet. We're going to raise that up. To in this case, because we are so strong, not necessarily three times exactly, which would have been 750, but you know, just a six. So, time and a half, you can say. 
Given the next guy, the small blind, pot odds are 38% of 1.6 to 1, the small blind folds, and the big blind just calls. Now, <laughs> the big blind, big blind just calls with around 70 big blinds here left, and this is a bad thing without a really strong hand for a lot of reasons. He is in between an early position raiser who raised five times a big blind, which is, I mean, normally much larger than you'll see. Um, representing strength, especially from a 10% raiser. Uh, early position, he's only raising, well, okay, he's raising 12% still even, but, um, you know, that, that bet size is quite high. He only calls, and he's not closing the betting. All right, so he's just calling my three bet cold, say, and there's a guy left behind, early position raiser to act, who has a lot of chips left, a lot of big blinds. And so what happens? Um, what's going to often happen when you're sandwiched like that, you only want to call that, kind of overcall that, when you're in his position, when you're calling, when you're closing the betting round. And so what happens? So he, he goes ahead and bets, uh, calls that six, right? And this guy pushes. <laughs> so, um, so he's made a two bet, we three bet it. He called the three bet, and now this guy here, this R4ND, makes a four bet. Right, and he pushes for his four bet up to yeah thirty bucks. So our pot odds to call now, and in this case we are calling him uh, all in. We only need thirty six percent to make that call. Right, uh, we need thirty six percent equity to break even in the long run, say. And yeah, that we're gonna have all day long. And we're giving this guy here twenty seven percent. So. Uh, here you could even argue that I should have gone ahead and raised it up to the full amount, just re-raised it. Um, so 2-bet, 3-bet, 4-bet, I should have just gone ahead and 5-bet it to make sure that this guy's all in if he does decide to call it. Um, or, you know, with kings, if you don't put him on aces or any kind of small, if you put him on a smaller pair, yeah, why not just have, you can also just call on him. I mean, basically this guy's all in anyways on the flop, you, you push everything, but a lot of people are just going to go ahead and push over the top. Um, yeah. Neither here nor there. You know, this guy then calls that three bet cold and has to fold because he's not closing the betting. So that's the big tip of the uh, hour here. All right, so he's out of there, and that's how it played out. And we end up, yeah, for NL50 taking out a decent pot. Uh, and that's the kind of stuff that you're going to see um, playing a lot of these guys. You know, this, this guy with, uh, you know, open raise in early position with sixes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then, and then pushing over the top, <laughs> uh, four betting all in, right, with sixes is pretty pretty absurd against two players. But that's the kind of stuff you're going to see at the low and mid limits. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to make, uh, make notes about. You need to play heads-up poker. And if you are playing one specific limit, definitely keep notes on your players. All right, so that would have been something to definitely note. Uh, next hand here, we've got uh, kings again, um, and we just kind of look around the table. Um, NL50 again, so uh, 100 big blinds is 50 total dollars. Uh, we've got here two small stackers, uh, another big stacker, a small stacker, a big stacker, big stacker, big stacker. Okay, and we've got actually quite a deep stack. We would have uh, put somebody, yeah, all that anyway. So yeah, we're looking at uh, 168. 69, whatever, big blinds here. So, um, back to the action. Fold, fold. Dr. Bob decides to limp. Okay, this is a so-called limp, so he just calls the big blind. Another fold, another fold. And this guy here, this Tettle, isolates. Okay, so he's isolating this limper in early position, who, by the way, is limping from early position 24% and middle position 35%. Um, no, forgive me, 21 and 30 respectively. He raises it up four times to isolate this guy. And, you know, standard textbook isolation raise would be four times uh, the big blind plus one per limber, so it should have been actually 250. But again, guys, I mean, if you're just doing your, your standard bets to four, that's, you know, this guy's going to fold it out quite a lot. One thing you need to be aware of is his limp call stat. You see there on the bottom left. And limp raise stat. Right, so he's only limp calling 31% of the time, which is already low. So this guy's losing a lot of money by limping and folding over the long haul. And we've got 949 hands on the guy. 
Good. So, I mean, he, you know, he makes a decent move with sevens in the small blind to isolate this guy, who is going to limp fold a lot. Of, you know, not to knock this guy's play, um, although his stats are pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, very standard isolation move with sevens in the small blind. Why not? Anybody can do it. Good. So we woke up with kings, and we make a three bet to six fifty. All right. So three times, three times his bet. Three times the open raise plus one per limper or okay cold call or whatever. We just go ahead and make it six fifty. Given this guy, Dr. Bob, odds of one point five to one. And he I think he lets it go. Yeah. And actually the odds for this guy here are then two to one or thirty three percent, basically pot. Alright, and he goes ahead and decides to have a look at the pot or the flop. And with this kind of hand, it's one of those old adages, you know, no set, no bet, right? You get three bet from the big blind like that. Um, you need to see another seven on that flop in order to really play on, uh, at least in the big pot. And here comes the flop. Nine, nine, six, two suited. So he whiffed hard. Um, you know, running, running flush draw with a seven, it's nothing to write home about. Uh, running straight draw, <laughs> basically needing an A10 or A5, um, or of course a 7, but that's, yeah, what he's looking at, and this, of course, he's only got 15% against our, our kings over here. He then checks to the last, uh, to the player to make the last aggressive action, namely us, and we make our standard C-bet. Uh, here, again, this is a two-seater board, this should have been probably a bit more um, but because it's paired, yeah, um, you know, I make this half pot bet. Um, if you're really, really consistent, any kind of two suited board, uh, connected board, you need to make that two thirds pot size as such. I go ahead and bet half pot in this case, anyways. And so he check calls, all right, with a middle pair. Turn comes and it's nothing, right? And now I'm really worried about this. I'm not really worried, but I'm quite worried about this flush draw. You know, this check kind of call stuff is indicative of of draws very often. Um, I wouldn't have thought that he was on sevens at this point. Um, but anyways, that was the case, and he checks again. So if he bets that, actually, here, I'm thinking, you know, maybe he isolated with ace nine. Um, you know, maybe he had a crazy... Uh, flop full house. It does happen from time to time. It's, you know, it's highly unlikely mathematically seen, but it, it does occur. Um, maybe he isolated, you know, with 10 jack suited, um, and he could actually, he could actually bet this into me. But, yeah, he doesn't, and so I want to protect my hand. And I do. And this time not with a half pot bet, but with a very sizable bet of, yeah, just under pot. And actually, that was probably a misclick. Seeing as how he only has 24 left, uh, 50 big blinds. Um, should, you know, if I'm going to go ahead and bet that his the pot's already bigger than his stack size, uh, and if I want to put him all in, I should have just gone ahead and done it now. Um, but it's neither here nor there. I mean, that's he's he's pot committed, and if he's going to make this call with sevens, I mean, he needs to go ahead and push it. Uh, let's say he put me on, you know, any ace ten or or better hand, right? And he thinks his sevens are good. Happens from time to time. So, um, anyways, I make this bet here to protect and also for value. And he just calls it, um, no help on the river. He checks, and of course, we put them all in, that's it. All right, so that's just to show you guys um, these two hands, basically, you know, what the two bet, the three bet, the four bet, even the five bet look like, uh, and how that then works out after the fact. And the last hand we want to show you is this one here. And this actually gives us quite a good overview of most of the concepts we looked at outside of the steel situ uh, the steel situations. All right, so again, in L50, um, on this table or at this table, we've got everybody's pretty much big stacked, right? So you don't have any small stackers to worry about. Um, and we've got one really deep stack player, and we're also pretty deep here at, at close to 200 big lines. Okay, so we get a fold, and the kings, of course, raise it up. And this guy here at uh, VPIP of 19, PFR of 16, even with 43 hands, um, 
you know, he's looking to be a pretty pretty solid player. And of course, with Kings, he makes a standard race to four big blinds. Uh, also indicative of somebody who generally knows what he's doing. And we make a standard three bet with our ace king offsuit uh, in position. And these guys here fold it down. And our kings here are early position raiser four bets. So he makes a two bet, we three bet, he then four bets. So what does that look like on his statistics? Uh, yeah, we have an end of 43, so it doesn't really tell us much. Um, anyway, so what we're looking at here is he's betting 19 into the entire pot of 26, as you see here. All right, so our call is just better than 2 to 1. So we only need 32% equity to break even in the long run. If I were to push all in and call right now, I'm not going all in right now, right? And we're both still sitting here with okay, his effective stack of 62 big blinds. So there's a lot of poker to be played post-flop with 62 big blinds. And I've got the ace-king. And if I five bet here, you know, I'm going to be running into large pairs a lot. Worst case scenario, I'm running into kings, as is the case here, at 70% equity, disadvantage for us. Or aces, which is even worse, uh, markedly worse. And in that case, if he's got aces against my ace king, I'm looking at um, something like 7 or 8% equity to the river, right, which is nothing. He's then, he's then four bet me. I'm sitting here with ace kings in position. And, you know, I'm getting good pot odds, so I just call it cold, say. And again, a lot of poker left to be played. And I'm looking for that ace of that king and hoping he's on queens or jacks or something like that. All right, so flop comes, monotone ace board. We don't have a spade here at all, but look at this scenario. All right, he's got kings and the nut flush draw, and we just hit that ace, and we don't have a flush draw at all, but we've got 60% equity on that flop just given that ace, even when he has the nut flush draw. That's something I want you guys to be aware of. This guy makes a very good move, by the way. Um, the pot is larger than his stack. So if he's going to make a move, he's not betting, you know, half pot, two-thirds pot. You know, he's not fooling around. He wants fold equity to be on his side, and he pushes all in. It's a very, you guys can learn a lot from this guy here. Uh, he goes ahead and pushes into that flop, which will scare a lot of guys off. Um, so, I mean, this guy's play, uh, bravo, perfect play on his part. Uh, unfortunately, ran into Ace King, and I actually ended up hitting. And a lot of guys, I mean, even with that Ace, they might end up folding here, but they're losing. Look at how much equity they're losing. You're actually a favorite here at 60%. All right, so this is a scenario here: uh, King of Clubs, King of Spades on the Spade flop, uh, and we've got Ace King here. All right, for 60%. That's exactly what both show. Uh, both hold them, the Hold'em Manager replayer and poker stuff. Let's say. Uh, in this scenario, I've got a queen. Let's say I'm not blocking one of his king outs for the set. How does that change the equity here? Well, not very much, right? I mean, basically 3% for him. Let's say I'm blocking then a club out. I'm sorry, a spade out. And that's, you know, essentially exactly the same. So even with an ace-king offsuit or an ace-queen blocking one of his one of his flush draw outs. I've still got sixty percent equity. I'm still, you know, a, a favorite. I'm three five favorite in the very, very long run. So don't let these boards scare you. Even even on this kind of scenario or in this kind of scenario where, you know, he might be on a pair of queens, jacks, kings, tens, whatever. That uh, tens probably not with the four bet, but um good. Even with the spade and you don't have one, when you flop that top pair top kicker, you're looking strong and most scenarios, and that's also one of these. So we, of course, getting uh, two to one odds and 31% break-even equity. We go ahead and call. Yeah, and then end up holding uh, no spade hit. And yeah, you guys can of course just watch how the equities change um, over the different streets. Again, this is Dylan, winner in a week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, hope it wasn't too much for that initial video. Uh, I would recommend that you guys maybe break that down into parts and uh, yeah, kind of, again, study this video at your own leisure in sections, say, uh, and definitely, definitely have a look at all the videos on Poker Math 
and player profiling before uh, you get into the second and third video. We'll, we'll go into much greater detail on uh, pre-flop play and how that also dictates post-flop play as well as different post-flop lines.